But now I could be like, well, it's uh, best Sunday Times best-selling author Chris. Well, <laughs> yeah. I could do that now, and they'll go. They'll be like, you just sound like a. Wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad, and I'm here in the United Kingdom with Pete Donaldson and his decadent drink that he can't drink because there's too much cream in the top and when he tries to drink it, it goes in his eyes and nose. They Pete. didn't give me a straw and little Chrissy Broad here in London for the first time in a very, very long time uh, has refused uh, to give me his little apple pen so I can stir the creamy coffee goodness. Pen, pineapple, pineapple pen. Pen, pineapple, pineapple pen. Well, Welcome home. I can't believe. Welcome home. I rock up. Chris C. Broad. With my brand new Apple Pencil and he wants to use it to stir his crappy coffee. I do. Stir the, stir the emotions of the listeners <laughs> and stir my coffee so I can actually drink it. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, I, instead of making Chris a coffee, I went to the Starbucks app uh, and Chris has changed because usually he would be found back in the day drinking something that, more akin to this. A, a sugary, It's less a coffee, creamy. more a dessert. It is more a dessert. I, I, you could probably <laughs> add a bit of beer so that would be That's bloody lovely. just but, a um, cup of diabetes. It really Look is. at it. And, and I can't drink it because they haven't given me a straw. So thanks, the whales. On the way here, on the Heathrow Express, mm. I got my uh, iced coffee from Heathrow. Right. I got a paper straw. By the time I got on the train, the straw had gone all soggy. And it's I a risk against time. You got to speed up. Couldn't drink the iced coffee. Drink anyway, your coffee quickly. Anyway, it's a celebration. I'm here with Pete in the mm. headquarters of Pete's billion dollar podcast company. But. Mm. As I flew in, I, the plane flew straight over here. Actually, did you I see? Looked, did you see the top of the building? It's like Tony Stark. It's like it's a stack <laughs> HQ, massive Pete's sign. Face. Yeah, it was annoying. It's kind of like, oh, can I just get out of here? But yeah. I had to fly all over London. Do you know what I thought as I looked out over eight million people? I thought eight million people, only one Sunday Times best-selling yes. author. Fucking get in. Chris and, is a best-selling author. As I said to my business partner. <laughs> He's going to be terrible. <laughs> and he said, best keep it within, within this this WhatsApp group then, I said. Arrogance level. There. It, Congratulations, insane. man. That's great. I, You know, I really wanted it. I wanted I really it. really wanted it. it. As I said a few weeks ago on the podcast, I you only get one shot when mm. the book comes out, right? And mm. then, I'm not going to do it again, probably. Right. Um, and They'll want you to do it again. They want it now, won't they? Yeah, oh, Chris, it can you just do another book for us? Yeah, because you really enjoyed the process the first <laughs> time, didn't you? It didn't stress you at all. <laughs> it, I didn't sort of speak to you over Christmas and you were crying into a really nice dinner. <laughs> oh, I've got so much of a book to write. Uh, I really did shoot myself in the mm. foot. Chess boxing yeah. and writing a book. Don't do that. Mentally, no. physically <laughs> destroyed. But uh, yeah, I, it's kind of cool though. Like, yeah, being a number, it's not even like a Sunday Times best. It's the number one. It's the yeah. biggest selling bloody book in the UK. Well, you deserve it, man. How's that You happened? worked really hard on it. I don't know how it happened. I, I really don't. But it's, mm. it's kind of like... Thank the, it, thank the people. Thank, thank the people. Thank the people, please. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. It's thanks to you. You've done this. Yeah. Well done. I mean, he wrote it. All so right. He doesn't mean it. But it's like, whenever. He knows that. Shut up, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> whenever, like, whenever you have, like, success, uh, yeah. as I've been lucky to have over the years, like, you kind yeah. of Look, share it with this, everyone. This doesn't sound like something <laughs> I've done. <laughs> this doesn't sound like anything <laughs> no, no, no. that's <laughs> kind of close to any experience I've had, if I'm completely well, honest. Like, you know, when you, when, if something good happens like this, you, mm. it feels like a win for everyone. Because mm. all of the Broad Japan community, this is a win for them as well yeah. and uh, and those pen pushes up at uh, City Hall <laughs> they're really <laughs> thinking again about well, like, messing with the man Chris Broad oh, it's cool I, like, yeah. I went on Trash Taste the other day mm. and uh, you know give them a piece of your mind oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like you know uh, we talked about how like British people are kind of rubbish introducing themselves. Mm. I don't know about you, but I'm like, hello, I'm doing a YouTube video. Right, yeah. And people yeah, yeah. Are like, oh, yes. Yeah, so I said, I know a man away. who does a YouTube video. <laughs> well, I, I never know how to introduce myself because right. calling us, oh, I'm a YouTuber. Mm. To anyone over 35, they're like, you disgust me. Wrongen. Yeah, it just says, you just mean wrongen. Yeah, you're a wrongen. You've, yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, it's not a proper job. It's rubbish. You're no. a loser. Get out of my kitchen. <laughs> and but, like, well, I'm, people I'm under 35. <laughs> People are, are like Marvel. They're like, "Wow, YouTube, the future!" Yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, but now I could be like, "Well, it's uh, best Sunday Times best-selling author, Chris." Well, <laughs> yeah. I could do that now, and they'll go. They'll be like, "You just sound like a dickhead." Get out of my gonna kitchen again. Everyone, I'm going to tell everyone the books are very right wing. <laughs> it's the new John <laughs> Peterson. Chris is the new John Peterson. He saw which way the wind was going. He saw which way the grift was going, and he thought, "You know what? I want a slice of that pie." <laughs> I, I every time I think of John Pearson, I remember that one interview where he just goes, "I choose my words very carefully," <laughs> and he said that sentence eight times. My favorite bit of that uh, of that man's whole hilarious um, oh, grift is that um, I like it when he um, spoke, uh, you know, as eloquently as he usually does uh, about. Um, I mean, terrible man, but he he uh, he spoke about uh, an emotional. 
um, experience he had watching a band. Yes. And he was like, I was watching this band in, I think it was in Nashville or something. And it was so emotional to me. And the, the way that these kind of like, these, these, these incredible musicians just kind of like their whole process just get together and mix this beautiful thing. And he's like, he's in tears Bless talking him. about it. Bless him. And then somebody uh, took a picture from the Instagram of him watching that band. And it was one of those really kind of hawky, tourist trappy, <laughs> dueling piano kind of bars. <laughs> <laughs> it's just two guys going, it was so, Oh, rubbish. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, he chooses his words very carefully. Uh, but so did I, and that's yeah. why it's a Sunday time. <laughs> What's the best word you've used in it? You've not even got a copy for us to use. Uh, 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 he's running off. He's run off. He's run off. He's just left me here to sit in this big, silly studio. You oh. Got, you, you need to use that one. What's as a, this? As a, as a prop. What the f- why have you given me the Lonely Planet book? Guide to Japan? Because you like Japan. It's a little bit like your book, isn't it? A hundred... I destroyed this book in front of a TED Talk once because I talked about how, like... Oh, like Jeff Kipps tearing up a phone <laughs> book. Well, like, they don't... There's, like, one page. There used to be, like, one page for all of North Japan. It right. like, Kyoto, a thousand pages. Tokyo, yeah. two thousand pages. <laughs> I just opened for the book to page 406, and it's a restaurant advert called Soul Fuck Try. Soul Fuck Try. <laughs> Control, alt, delete. What, Soul Fuck what Try. Is that? Nice, good. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so random. I want to go there now. It's in uh, it's in Osaka. Soul fuck trolley. What well, about uh, this uh, excellent book? Is this the uh, the football the, gamble? Uh, football uh, ramble. Go on, oh, no. cool. Written by not, not a not a best selling book. Pete uh, it can be found in a lot of charity shops. Disconcertingly so. BBC Radio Five. Consistently brilliant. <laughs> consistently <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. I want to be consistently brilliant. But well done. Yeah. Thanks, your Dave. book. Thanks. Uh, the... lo- you, I could have done a forward for you, but you know, who did your forward again? It was somebody uh, very nobody, popular. Wasn't nobody it? did a forward. What? Nobody said. Nobody. Chris is brilliant. Read nobody. this book. Uh, nobody said I'm brilliant. You've it's got so many shame. big highfalutin friends. Uh, none of them stepped none, up. None reviewed it. No, uh, nobody. I'll review should have it. Sent the, I, I don't. Ten think, out of ten. Should have sent the Ken Watanabe and been like, read this. And it, he wouldn't have done it. He would just come. <laughs> what it. is this? Shit? He wouldn't have. Done it. <laughs> but he yeah, no, it's cool. I'm just, you know what? I'm just glad the book's done and it's out of the way and it's released because mm. I spent like months writing it in a room, just like. Mm. What's, that? What's that? What's that? What's that noise, Chris? Is it the pitter patter of another advance for another <laughs> <laughs> for book number two? Penguin I must say that on the door. There's not much money in books. It really Ooh. isn't. Like, yeah, <laughs> as he, he, you told me, he warned us on the podcast. Um, yeah, you know, try splitting it five fucking yes. minutes. Excuse <laughs> my language. At least I have to split it between a football ramble. Like, yeah, there's <laughs> there, you, there's there's no money in books no. unless you sell a million copies, mm. uh, like Atomic Habits or Prince Harry's awful book. But like, it's, mm. but like, yeah, it's it's yeah. There's there's no money. But the audiobook is coming. You are in the London. To, you're in London to record and the audiobook, which is uh, exciting. It's, it is. I've yeah. said it before. It's going to be hard work. It's going to be hard work. You. Three days in a room, eighty thousand words. But like, yeah, yeah, think about the book though. It's kind of cool. Just go back in time, relive mm. moments from ten years ago and whatnot. So I really enjoy writing it personally, and that's why I don't think I could write a sequel because mm. I don't. There's nothing I could write about now. Have, have there been any kind there? of um, reviews from like um, punters who've bought the book? Like good ones. Yeah, there's a awful oh, <laughs> the the worst review I saw. It's just a photo of the book. I think it's on Amazon. Mm. Amazon. It was like four stars. Amazon, and it's a photo of the book. It's I got the book, but there was blood on it. <laughs> and, just, and there's a photo of the book and the pages is covered in blood. Right. And it's Could like, that not just be red ink? It looked like no. It looked like blood. Like blood. Oh, right, there okay. is, it, I, there's a bit of a brawn Japan every book. Just special, cut my fingers special over. Special gift. <laughs> a little special gift for the I, fans. It was a bit. I bled to write this book. I, it's kind of like, wow. don't give that a bad review. That's not my fault. There's blood in the book. There's somebody at the bloody warehouse chopped their fingers off while <laughs> fucking doing it. <laughs> Someone making the book painstakingly in a room, sticking it together, amazing. cutting their fingers up. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. The reviews are generally good, apart from that one. Mm. And the breastfeeding books, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the famous oh, breastfeeding. Uh, How many did you sell those, uh, those in the end? Seven or eight? I think like a few dozen breastfeeding books. Wow. I could not want that more. I could not want that more. Oh, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, I really, really want one. Because I'm breastfeeding. There's a few people don't even know what we're talking about here, but like, yeah, for some reason, somebody stole my book. They stole the front cover of the book, put mm. it on Amazon US, and they inside the book, it was just a, a painstaking guide on the ups and downs and highs and lows of breastfeeding. Highs and lows. Yeah. Mm. But I think so. that'd be like a limited edition, special edition, auctionable item one day. I want one. It's like I, the, want, um, I want one. Yeah, I want one. <laughs> Let's try Somebody was, I, you know, I said like the other week, someone's really sad, and they got this, and I was like, no, this is a treasured item. Mm. 
This is the breastfeeding edition. Well, why don't you? <laughs> it's not going <laughs> to... Unless Penguin give me you? an advance for a second book. And I'm like, well, this one, it's got to be breastfeeding. One of the audio... Travelling the world. One of the, uh, one of the audio books that you're recording, there, there is an option to turn on the sound of a suckling young child. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, think, I think my next book should just be travelling around the continents, various countries of the world and just discover different rituals around breastfeeding. Yes, nice. Huh. <laughs> nice. Oh, God. Fuck it. But anyway. The amount of stuff you made me cut out of the show last week. <laughs> and now you're saying that you're going to go around the world looking at breastfeeding. Breastfeed, it's, it's part of the book, isn't it? It's part of the book. Part of the, book. Part of the, part of the world. Part right. of the uh, Bronze Pan universe. I arrived this time. Or as I call it, the Tiddyverse. Oh, God. But the last, uh, the last two times I arrived in the UK, the first thing I did, right, my ritual... It wasn't breastfeeding. That was, <laughs> <laughs> it was. Your rivals. It was. It was While going, you're waiting for your bag. It was going to the vending machine and getting a Kinder Bueno. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And each time it got, it got stuck. Right. And I didn't get the Kinder Bueno. I'm sorry, Chris. This time I walked straight past it. Went no, not today. You didn't fonz it. You didn't get it. I didn't. A, a I, didn't. Right. I wasn't. I wasn't ready. You're not doing it. No. Right. Okay. I've learned my lesson. No <laughs> bloody British vending machines for me ever again. How are you? Stupid. How are you holding up? Because obviously you. How are you? Hold, how are you holding up at your end of the bargain? How like how is? Sense. Well, I mean, you must be absolutely bloody exhausted because you landed. You touched down here Wednesday or something. I don't know. Because we were supposed to be recording like last week, and I got incredibly ill. Um, too I much absinthe again. Too much absinthe again. Too much score more, if they call it. Um, and uh, yeah, like, and and then you went off to Europe for a bit, and then came back, and it's just like you've been all over the place. You must be knackered. I don't know where I'm coming or going. No, but I'm 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 an, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. happy. And that's I would have been happy if I had that Kinder Bueno. Yeah. Oh no, okay. it's good. It's good to be back in the UK. Summer. It's beautiful. You know, you come out of Heathrow Airport and you just smell weed, and it's like. <laughs> We're home, yeah. Everyone does that here, and you can smell you. that on the, the the warm afternoon breeze. Do you the do smell the, do of you weed. Do you do the, do you do the um, face when people? <laughs> do, when you do, do, the weed? do you do 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 the weed, Chris? That's that's all American podcasts in video. I like though. They're all just like, <laughs> we should oh, be doing let's talk right about weed forever. Why aren't we doing that now? endlessly? Let's celebrate a leaf. Joe for Rogan a bit. style. Yeah. Um, uh, do you kind of like? Do, do you do the when you hit when you smell a bit of weed? You go. Mm-hmm. I kind of go. What? I still do it at my age. I still go. What well, pasta got? Oh no, T. <laughs> oh, well, you're a bit older than I am, Pete. Mm, it's true. a different time. But yeah, I, different I think time. I grew up used to it yeah. around me, right? But <laughs> I've grown up in oh, prohibition. Yeah. I'm like, if I see a, a pint of lager, I'm like, what? <laughs> Hello. Oh my god. Someone call the cops. Well, it's good to be back, though. Yeah. Fundamentally, it's nice to be here, back in a room with you, <laughs> first time since Christmas. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's good cool stuff. that we're, you know. Doing the podcast with video now. With video now. And I realise that the last few episodes have been us basically talking about um, how cool the video is. Uh, But let's not forget, there has been a lot of um, audio podcasts released over the years. Oh, yeah. A lot of people have been listening. Still will, I hope. The comments comments are like on the YouTube, though. Um, Different different breed. Different breed of poster, I would say. Um, I like people who sort of say... Um, Chris, you should do an audio version of this show. Well, and I go, we've done 450 episodes. I mean, the reason, like, <laughs> one of the main reasons, and, uh, you know, we've talked about why, why not do a mm. video. Like, I, it's the comments, yeah. It's kind of like, it's half the reason to do it, because you want to be like, oh, yeah, I want to engage with people right, listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also the bit where it's kind of like, oh, no, but then every time, like... You feel like you're, you know, bearing in mind that your job is kind of fulfilling what people want from you and you have to be very open to new ideas mm. and how you, how people um, want you to do, you know, the things that they enjoy effectively. Mm. But it's hard to have a data driven uh, uh, um, kind of um, experience from that, pulling that out. It, 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 it's more just like, that man's had something horrible about me and now I have to do something different because I'm upset. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. it must be hard to sort of, to sort of not absolutely lose your loaf and get I'm, very upset. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most YouTubers that I know, big, the, you know, big YouTuber folks, mm. they don't read the comments. They just don't. And no. They're all the happy for, the for it. I do, I do read them still, you mm. know. Um, I like to engage Still with real folks to me, watch. damn it. Yeah I, yeah, I think it's important to engage with viewers and, and chat with them in the comments. I do enjoy it. And yeah. honestly, like one in a hundred comments might be a shit comment. It's just unfortunate that you remember that. It's like yes, going down yeah, the line yeah, yeah. of people and shaking hands, but you remember the one person that punched you in the face. In his hands. <laughs> yeah, or just, just the person <laughs> that punched you in the face, right? You, yeah. you remember that a little bit, so it's yeah. unfortunate. But like, no, it's cool. And it's it's really been really fun to take it to YouTube. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks, guys. But thank you for listening. Yeah. Because I realise that, you know, most people might still just listen to it because mm. it is a listenable You can't thing. see me drinking a delicious coffee. I can't see Pete making a 
right old I fucking mess. I can't, I can't drink it, look. Oh dear, well, why are you trying to drink whatever that is, that frothy mess? I'll read out the story of the week. Oh, it's at me teeth. And we got a story from Lucy from Swansea, who says, uh, hello, Pina Colada, oh, Pina Pete and Colada Chris. Nice. So I've got this little tale from my time in Osaka that's uh, like equal parts confusing and hilarious. Uh, I'd caught wind of the... I hope it doesn't involve that dodgy place wind. we just read about in Lonely Planet. What was it called? Soul Fuck Try. Soul Fuck Try, yeah. <laughs> I can't really open the page and found that. The one restaurant in Japan that's got a swear word in the name. Um, I've caught wind of this speakeasy that's like the Willy Wonka factory of cocktails. No menu, just pure flavour wizardry tailored to your taste buds. Intrigued, I'm on a mission, following some cryptic online posts that had me hunting down clues. And let me tell you, finding this place was no easy feat. I had to track down a teeny little door with a hole cut in it on the third floor of a building. Like I'm sort of some sort of cocktail craving contortionist. But hey, I'm all for a bit of adventure. So I shimmy through that hole, feeling like I've just entered Narnia or something. Inside, it's like this cosy little pocket of magic. I mean, this place was so small, you'd think you'd accidentally stumbled into someone's walk-in closet. But that was part of the charm, I suppose. So the whole point is there's no menu, which in the moment threw me off. I didn't have a clue what to order. I think for a minute, uh, and there I am, ready to roll with a classic pina colada, my go-to. But then I see a sign glaring at me in all its English glory. If you want a pina colada, go somewhere else. (laughs) I swear I had to do a double take. My go-to drink blacklisted from the speakeasy. I'm feeling a bit offended and amused. Like, yeah, it might be a bit cringe, but who can I deny they love the taste? Who can deny, sorry, that they love the taste of a pina colada? I do like it. It's good. Yeah. I can drink a, can drink a colada. Good shit. So I'm back to square one. No, I no idea what to ask for. But hey, I'm a trooper. I turn to the bartender and ask, "What do you recommend?" He starts talking, but the place is so tiny and the music's so loud, I can barely make out a word. So there I am, nodding along like I'm on the secret, uh, like I'm in on the secret, and saying, "Yeah, one of those, please." Whatever. The bartender nods back, and just like that, <laughs> I've handed this drink so strong I can't sip it without wincing and looking <laughs> like a twat. I'm not even going to lie, it tasted horrendous. Bring the pina coladas back. What are your guys' go-to drinks? Are you ting pina colada? Cheers, Lucy from Swansea, the and, pina colada lover. And that's why you should always travel with a pineapple. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, you climb through a hole, you John mclean it through a pipe, you ended up in someone's front room, <laughs> John demanded McClane's. a pina colada. I mean... What were you expecting? <laughs> I, I, I just kind of a shame that they're like, if you want to play a pina colada, fuck off. Yeah, like, why did I, they, they write really that? should. I mean, I think they should really be. Did they actually say it, fuck off? No, they said oh, go, go somewhere, somewhere else. else. Go somewhere else. I mean, still, that's still quite. Uh, it's a bit harsh. It's, <laughs> it's customer, a bit down the line, isn't it? Customer's always right, and if the yeah. customer, if Lucy wants a pina colada, give her a pina colada. I think you should have ordered it, Lucy, and see what would happen. They just slap yeah, you. Yeah, just me. Yeah, <laughs> what you can do, maybe just get me a pina colada. I would say that, like, if there was a place that only did cocktails, I would assume your martinis of this world, right. your Negronis, maybe a Caprina or something, would be the ones that they Old would fashion, probably, yeah, yeah uh, like lean into. The big whiskey guys, aren't they? Yeah. Aren't they? So. You know, I, I, I think I would have been all right, but if... I mean, you would have been all right with your Moscow Mule. Moscow Mule, isn't it? Much, that's, that's my drink, Lucy. Favorite, Moscow Mule. Yeah. A bit of lime, a yeah. bit of vodka, a bit of whatever, ginger ale. <laughs> whatever ginger else is in there. <laughs> whatever, whatever else is in there. You can't... Nobody in the UK knows what it is. No. no I, but, guy nearly punched me in the face at a pub last Christmas. I came back and I was like, uh, can I have a Moscow Mule, please? He's yeah. like... What the fuck is that? And I was like, it's a, it's a vodka with ginger ale and some lemon. He's like, why don't you just say that then? And I was like, I remember why I left the UK now. I remember why I left this fucking country. Chris, I mean, if you've been watching the news, they have invaded a country. So maybe maybe it's a political stance he was making. You never know. All right, yeah, you never true, know. True. But it's, that's my go-to trip. What would you have had then in this hypothetical cocktail I don't know, pub? Man. I don't know, man. I think I would very much... I just like what they do with ice out there. They're always titting about with it. They're always making Uh, perfect, icy, sort of circular drinks. It's really good stuff. So I would probably mm. go for an old-fashioned or a Negroni or something. Anything with something bitter in. Delicious. I lo- yeah, I love the whiskey glass when you get like the big round ball mm. of ice perfectly yeah. formed. There's probably a reason why that's not very good by some just... cocktail connoisseurs, but I, mm, I, I think it's cool. No, I think it's, I think there's science behind and it. And then when I'm finished, I finish, I, I just have it in my hand and throw it at people. <laughs> like a wizard with an orb. Put it, I put it in this, yeah, I put it in my socket, swing it around my head and go, <laughs> does anybody want some? I'm not paying for this, bye. And back oh, out of the good. room.
Oh, good God. <laughs> well, I'll check this place out. I don't think yeah. Lucy wrote where it's called other than it's Willy Wonka Factory of Cocktails. No, I would like to know. I think Lucy is particular is being uh, particularly uh, obtuse so that uh, nobody finds out and Can't floods her. the place. I Can't want to, well, come on, Lucy. Oh, no, I want to go there and be like, Pina Colada's all around. Yeah, I want more. everyone in this restaurant, everyone in this bar, give them a Pina Colada <laughs> and see what happens next. Yeah. Anyway, Pina Colada's aside, <laughs> what... <laughs> what is the news of the week, Mr. Donaldson? What's going on in Japan over there? Oh, you're not going to believe what people have been eating, Chris. There's always something going on Pineapples. over there. Uh, there's been a recall issued for thousands of rice balls following some customer complaints. Oh. Earlier this month, 7-Eleven recalled all of its pickled plum shiso, uh, shiso rather, uh, and sesame rice balls after two people found cockroaches in them. Mmm, extra oh. fibre, extra oh. protein, delicious. Oh. Um, those plummy guys, they never look nice. Are they nice? Are they good? Are no. they bad? Yeah. Ooh. It's kind of salty, isn't it? Ooh, meh. Like yeah. the sour plum. No, yeah. no, 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 no. It's Don't care awful. for it. Don't care Terrible. for it. Anyway, uh, in both cases, a cockroach was said to have been found inside the packaging film. Thankfully, both customers noticed the insect before eating the rice balls. Oh. And they... Um, Confirm the contamination, the company, 7-Eleven. Uh, they issued a recall of all of the pickled plum shisos, uh, the sesame rice balls, sold at its stores in Saitama, uh, with the best before date of whenever. But um, 2,000 rice balls sold at 370 stores. So there's just, I wonder how many more cockroaches they found later on. Basically, this contamination happened what are you looking at what are you looking at the computer the computer in your hands for what are you are you questioning the amount of cockroaches yeah, are yeah, you yeah. questioning the amount of stores you said 2000 rice balls sold at roughly 370 stores yeah. that's 5.4 rice balls per store right that infected with cockroaches that's too many one's too many half <laughs> is too many someone would say yeah, it's yeah. pretty bad. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah well, I mean, they, they didn't all have cockroaches in them. I just believe they were Two from the same... The, the, the cockroach infestation happened at a very specific time <laughs> in the um, in the company factory. But, I mean, it must be extra challenging for factory owners to keep things clean in such a humid, hot, mm. cockroachy um, kind of environment. I mean, cockroach is the universal symbol for you fucked up your hygiene. Yeah. <laughs> and and in, in the UK, well, we got flies. They're just like flies, man. Mm. They just hang out. But like cockroaches are like, you fucked it. You fucked <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, it's weird. I mean, all the years I've lived in Japan, I've seen cockroaches maybe four times yeah. in various places. One was my apartment in North mm. Japan, and it followed me down the corridor like a oh, horror movie. That's quite sweet. It was really weird. It followed me down the corridor of the it's apartment. Are you YouTuber? Well, I, I went in my room and like shut the door to yeah. my apartment, and I looked through the peephole. I shit you not, it was just sitting there by the door, giving the fingers like a like a puppy dog or a cat waiting for me to come out oh, and feed it. It was that's really very sweet. It was a bit creepy. I like that story. Are they smart? Do they know what's going on? They could have gone to be... They're probably in the wall. Their family are probably in the wall somewhere. Mm. And I think that's lovely. Well, the next time I saw one was on my pillow at a love hotel in Shibuya. That wasn't so pleasant. Mm. And then the third I mean, you, time... You'd go to Hotel Cockroach. <laughs> it, was, it was like a chocolate on the pillow. You had to eat it. Oh, oh, it was really right. It was called like Hotel... Mona Lisa Hotel Paris mm. or some sh- anyway it was it was, oh, it was I, I mean I would say I'm surprised that these cockroaches managed to find themselves inside the wrapper of the onigiri because uh, that's something me with a pause yeah. thumbs have been able to do every single time I want one of those bloody it must, things it must have sort of wandered into the rice the, the rice pile of rice or the plums oh, yeah, food, could have been it? going hey. for the plums the pl- oh god I mean have you got the plums Ume, you know, sour plums are just uh, tr- the good thing is because I hate sour plums I would oh. never this would never happen to me no Unless they go in the tuna ones. If they go in the mayonnaise right. tuna yeah. on a geary, then I'm stuffed. Dead cats. I'm done. There's loads of cats in there. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Kill me or buy me. I don't, whatever. I don't care. Oh. But yeah. Uh, uh, what was the third? Oh, uh, third time I saw a cockroach was in a restaurant in Sendai. <laughs> That was Cockroach Watch with Chris Sprott. Three, three Cockroach encounter, <laughs> encounters in ten years. That's it's, not bad. It's mainly what his book's about. <laughs> I remember the day well. It was all seven from the Cockroach was there. <laughs> yeah, no, I've only seen it three times. It's not bad for ten years. That's not too bad. Hygiene. Well, so anyone who's scared... Seen a lot more rats, though. You can't, you can't say that you have... Just because you've only seen three Cockroaches, that's not your hygiene. I, I've seen a lot more rats in Japan, though. Okay. They're right. everywhere. They're, they're everywhere. <laughs> they're rats, Good. cockroaches... Don't worry, most things in Don't Japan worry. are safe. Yeah. I will say, though, like, when you go into some mum-and-pup-style restaurants, like little family-run ones, they are quite 
gritty and grotty. Mm. You look in the kitchen. Yeah. Don't don't look in the kitchen. Don't look in the kitchen. You'll see like things. You want with the hot dog. Yeah. You won't. You'll you'll eat the the nice food. You'll be like, yeah. oh, this is the best karaage. food on karaage. Yeah. And they'll be like, ah. Oh, and then you look in the kitchen and be like, holy shit. <laughs> Somebody hasn't cleaned up since 1979. Mm. So be, be, yeah. I think that's kind of like, that's, that's throwing me off a lot of the time with Japanese restaurants. Because the, the license for like getting a restaurant or a bar is quite easy. Right. Yeah, well, uh, the, anyone could just do it in their like kitchen. In their well, house. Isakai is like they're cooking preferred food on like just little stu- little kind of like camping gas stoves. Um, Sometimes in, yeah, in, yeah. in in a toilet, basically. <laughs> it's like, Here's your food. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of the reason like Japan's dynamic when it comes to dining out. Sometimes, but yeah, there's there's been a lot of cases where I've looked in the kitchen and gone, that wouldn't pass a sanitary test. No, how has this happened? No, but I don't want to come here again. You're a kimonagi. Do you remember kimonagi on the telly? No, they were like the people that? that would come around and clean. It basically showed you how to clean stuff oh, in, in like... Britain. They were like, it was a, one of them was long and one of them was short and big. And they would just come around and every, the answer was always bicarb or white wine vinegar. It was just always vinegar or bicarb, acid, uh, alkali. <laughs> Put them on your taps and it'll just help somehow. It's not, it sounds like Maria Kondo. No, it wasn't her. Wasn't uh, her? No, turning up, throw things that don't spark joy. No, that that no. This is just <laughs> toss genuinely out, toss out your sick partner. on the floor. How do you get sick off the floor? Kind <laughs> oh, of, <laughs> kind of vibe. Maria Kondo would not approve of that. <laughs> Does I it would give you joy. It, 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 it makes me slip, actually, <laughs> Marie. Oh, good god! What happened? She kept her head down. Actually, actually, yeah. she? probably tied it away. Yeah, tied it. <laughs> it's too much. Didn't do. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if it doesn't spark joy, yeah. throw it out the window. My That's face has from. never sparked joy. Oh, anyone. Toss God it out. damn it. Toss we'll it be out. back in just a moment, guys, with your stories, comments, and questions over in the fax machine. Wow. All right, and we're back with the fax machine. What have we got this week from our listeners and viewers? Mr. Donovan. Roy the boy says, Ahoy, Chris and Pete. Um, I'm writing to ask Chris since moving to Tokyo. Do you miss living in Sendai? Is there a big difference? Is there a big hole in your heart where once... Send I lived. I added that bit. I think, <laughs> and I think you can tell. No, no, no? not really. Uh, no, so, uh, yes, a little bit. Do you I, miss the slightly less um, punishing amount of people running around? Yeah, I do. I mean, Tokyo is a lot hotter than Sendai. It's like five degrees hotter. And wow. in the summer, that can be the really difference between up, yeah. like life and death. Yeah. Um, I miss just being able to get in my car and drive over to see Natsuki easily. That never yeah. happened, but it could. Once every year, I yeah. did it, and <laughs> I mean, I mean, I would, I would say that you um, mimed um, a motorbike there. <laughs> I did. I don't yeah, know why. Might, um, I miss, I miss the countryside of Yamagata, which was on the doorstep of Sendai, right? Mm. And I actually spent before the move, I was spending quite a bit of time in Yamagata working on a documentary about mm. a traditional inn that's coming out soon. And that was when I was like, oh, why am I moving mm. again? This I should have been moving over here into the fucking mountains and the rice field. But like, you know. It is what it is. And it's been kind of cool living in Tokyo. I don't think I could do it like mega long term. Yeah. I'm not a city person. And right. um, yeah, but it's been really cool being hanging out with friends. You know, I've seen Pete and Connor and all sorts of. And I have more than friends than that. <laughs> uh, Jerry, I saw <laughs> Jerry once. You don't say, <laughs> it's been where, cool where, hanging out with friends. Are all like the trash taste lads around Tokyo? Is that kind of where they're. Or in the they're... Tokyo area, spread I around. See, yeah. right, Let's okay. not dox them. But, not dox. <laughs> I, I don't think you'll be able to find them by the way to no, Tokyo. No, no. But like no, they're spread around. It's it's cool. Like, I can see all sorts of friends, all three of them. Um, a lot easier than like all before. sorts of friends with yeah. Chris. And also, when I flew here to London, you know, I it was I just went to Hanada Airport yes, really easily. That's before easy. I used to be like, I oh, get on the bullet train. It must be train, nice to have like living in a city that that really works transport wise. Oh yeah. my god, that's good. And it's a true twenty four hour city as well, which uh, Tokyo London yeah. is not. That's very true. It is, but no, like Tokyo is a fantastic city to live in. It's not really for me. It's good from a sort of business worker perspective, yeah. But I couldn't do it long term. Mm. I just don't think the quality of life is that great there. But then maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. Just not for me. But like beautiful city, go and live there. But I'm very, very glad I got to spend my first few years in Japan in the countryside in somewhere a bit more rural, having right. an experience that most folks don't get to have. Okay, dokie. Because Tokyo's that's fair. So globalized. Uh, we've got a question here from Ollie. He says, "Hello, uh, Kiora, Chris, and Pete. My brother Isaac and I have been fans of your channel." And the podcast for years now. Isaac currently lives in Iwaki. Oh, he's at ALT with Jet. Iwaki's uh, in Fukushima. I don't know why I'm singing. Mm, nice. Iwaki, yeah, beautiful. It's South Fukushima. And I was hoping to buy him a copy of your book for his upcoming birthday. Where can I buy a copy that'll be sent within Japan? Kind regards, 
You let this Ollie. question through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, well, uh, the, the, <laughs> the Sunday Times best-selling book is available. It's oh, Amazon. Mm. Amazon Japan, isn't mm. it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Just Amazon Japan. It's in the section uh, <laughs> expressing milk. Uh, and computer sex. scientist biographies, weirdly. Computer scientist. Number one, it's the number one book about computer science, apparently, on Amazon. <laughs> I don't know how. How much computer science did he put in there? Fuck all. Right. Like, I got, I, it's just like, it's like Steve Jobs. Right. <laughs> And then are they just picking Bill up Gates. Like, picking up that your, your your writing style is very mechanical? It's just, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's weird to be above Edward Snowden and Steve Jobs, but I'll take it. Right, even though I don't deserve it. What's happened to old Snowden? You don't hear about him. I don't anymore. know, but Do he's not number one in the computer he's science not. section. True. So you can, point. Yeah. yeah, he's living in Russia. <laughs> uh, Abby from Loughborough says, "Hello, Chrissy and Pete. I've heard all about the cherry blossom season in Japan, but are there any other lesser known seasonal uh, events or festivals that the Japanese celebrate?" Cheers, hmm. Abby. From Loughborough, well, Abby, August is the probably the biggest time for festivals. You got Orbon, the festival of the dead. Mm. Um, we celebrate your family that are, that are dead. Um, we celebrate oh. them, we remember them, which is nice. Yes. Um, Criticize them. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you love me, Dad? You stand <laughs> over the grave. Uh, and uh, there's there's a lot of fireworks festivals, like the, all the fireworks festivals, the uh, biggest of which are in Niigata, Akita, and actually Yamagata, mm. weirdly because there's not much else there. I think they want to be like, well, we've got a fireworks display. Fuck you, Tokyo. <laughs> um, and you've got like Almori, you've got the, the the amazing festivals up there. No, I can't remember the name of it. No, right. ne- Nepeta. Nepeta festivals in right. Almori. Yeah, every, it's just like the, the festival season is August. Unfortunately, it's so hot, you can't really enjoy the festivals. No. You, you will be roasted like well, a chicken. But... In in July, um, there's in something called the Hokkai Heso Matsuri. The What's Belly that? Button Festival. Oh, my Lord. Where everyone just draws faces on their bellies and does a belly, da- belly dance. There's, it, there's so many festivals, right? Festival. That's a good one. That's a good one. Why is nobody doing... What I like about it is that um, this week, this year, or maybe last year, as I'm just looking online, um, I'm looking online, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, the address was a temporary venue inside um, Shin Aoi uh, Shopping Street. <laughs> oh, there you go. Just men and women painting their bellies. Them around. Around. Yeah. There's there's so many festivals you never hear about though. Like there's one in I think Akita where they build this incredible bespoke boat out of wood and a paper. bespoke boat. Bespoke boat and then they burn it in a oh. field. Uh, and it's like right. the children of Akita spend a year working on it and then it's just like, all right, get a petrol out. Yeah. <laughs> Start building the next one. What's the more of the festival? Yeah. Don't ever dream children. <laughs> don't aspire to build a ship. <laughs> like, I don't know. But there's so many cool festivals. I feel like I should like dedicate a summer, maybe next summer, mm. to going around the country and like chronicling them all. Because uh, right. I've seen frighteningly f- few festivals, but uh, yeah, great country. And there's, yeah, but and there's, there's big ones as well, like the New Year's and whatnot. But uh, mm. yeah. August, festival season. Cool. That's all for now this week, guys. Keep the stories, questions, comments coming into Broad Japan Podcast at gmail.com. We'll be back later in the week to do all over again. But for now, good to be back in the UK with Mr. Donaldson. I'll be here the next few episodes. Um, see you around. Have a great few days. And we'll see you right back here to do all over again on the Broad Japan Podcast. Bye for now. Cheers, everyone. My uh, drink's melted slightly. Yay! Hey.